We have huge news this week. Disneyland is finally reopening, but we're already inside one of Disneyland's parks before that big opening date. Disney World parks hit capacity this week, and annual pass holders, you're finally getting that orange bird magnet. All the latest Disney news is coming up right now on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. It is a big week here. Big week for Disneyland, big week for Disney World. We now know when the resort will officially open over there on the West Coast, and we got to experience the limited time event happening at Disney California Adventure. Spring break is looking a little different in Disney World, plus we've got some new snacks to tell you about, so let's get started. First up, that Disneyland news. It is reopening on April 30th. Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure will reopen on April 30th, 2021. The parks will be able to open at 15% capacity. For comparison, Disney World is currently at 35% capacity. And only California residents will be able to visit Disneyland when it first opens. There will also be an early preview event where Disney will invite cast members and quote members of the local community to be the first theme park guests after more than a year of closures. We'll keep you posted when we hear more about that preview. We'll let you know how to get tickets and we'll let you know all the ins and outs and details. I'm sure there's going to be another crazy rush on the website when we all have to wait in a long line to get tickets. So we'll keep you updated on when that's going to happen. When to plan to take your morning off of work to sit in a queue online to get that ticket. Now, Disneyland is set to implement many of the health and safety measures that we've already experienced in Disney World, including a park reservation system. So just like in Disney World, guests ages three and up will need both a park reservation, so a park pass, and valid admission, so a ticket, for the same park on the same date to enter the park. And these reservations will need to be made in advance. Mandatory masks will also be required. There will be heightened sanitation protocol, and parades and fireworks are suspended, though we will still see characters around around the parks, likely in socially distanced pop-up meet and greets like we've seen in Disney World. Now, has anything changed in the last year in Disneyland? Well, yeah, there's going to be a new ride to check out when Disneyland reopens. Snow White's Scary Adventures has been reimagined as Snow White's Enchanted Wish. They're making it less scary, and it will be opening along with the parks on April 30th. Disney's also cryptically said that new magic is coming to Haunted Mansion. Now, they haven't released details on what exactly this means or when the attraction will open, but something's going to change at the Haunted Mansion. Now, what about hotels? Disney's Grand Californian Hotel will also fully open to guests on April 29th. The villas are still scheduled to open on May 2nd. A hotel stay does not guarantee a park reservation, kind of how it did with Galaxy's Edge. You know, if you stayed in a hotel, you would automatically get entrance to Galaxy's Edge. That's not the case this time. So you'll still need to make a separate reservation and park pass to get into the parks. The two other Disneyland Resort hotels, Paradise Pier and the Disneyland Hotel, are going to reopen at a later date. Now, for those of you who are wondering about Avengers Campus, Avengers Campus is not going to open on April 30th. As far as we know, Disneyland has said it will open at a later date as well. Okay, A Touch of Disney has started. Yep, Disney California Adventure has reopened for A Touch of Disney, a specially ticketed event that gives guests access to food booths, shopping, but no rides in the still technically closed theme park. Both Lamplight Lounge and Carthay Circle Lounge are open for reservations. Several food booths typically found at the Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival are out, and a few snack locations have reopened for the event. You can get the Disneyland Monte Cristo at Smoke Jumpers. Dole Whip is available at the Adorable Snowman Frosted Treats on Pixar Pier. And actually, you can get a lemon pineapple Dole Whip swirl, which I think is the first time I've ever seen that. And of course, they've got those pepperoni spring rolls, skewers from Bengal Barbecue, and other favorites returning from other festivals. You can see all the details on the food that's available along with full reviews over at DisneyFoodBlog.com. We also saw some socially distanced characters like Mater and Lightning McQueen, Miguel from Coco, Chip and Dale, Mickey, and Goofy. Goofy and Max, who were fishing over at Pacific Wharf. Super, super cute. The event will run Thursdays through Mondays from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. until April 19th. The introductory $75 ticket for this limited capacity event includes admission, parking, unlimited photo pass downloads, and a $25 dining card. The event is completely sold out, though, so no more tickets are being sold. 
More Disneyland news. Disneyland has extended discounts for Legacy Pass holders. The Disneyland app has been updated with a digital discount ticket for Legacy Pass holders, which is Disney's name for former Disneyland Pass holders, as the program has been discontinued. The new feature in the app will be the new way to validate and process your discount. You will still need your ID and annual pass along with the new digital discount ticket to claim any discounts. The discounts include up to 20% off select merchandise at Disneyland Resort theme parks and up to 15% off dining throughout Disneyland Resort. Legacy pass holder discounts will continue until Disneyland announces a new membership offering. All right, let's go over to the East Coast. Disney World reaches capacity over spring break. Yep, it's spring break and the parks in Disney World all reached their full capacity this week. But it looks a whole lot different than spring break in years past. We saw long lines for some rides and shows. Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom was around a 95 minute wait. Well, the rest of Pandora felt like a ghost town at times. And Mickey's Philhar Magic in Magic Kingdom, which typically never has a wait, had a 40 minute wait at midday. So things are real weird. They are not necessarily what you would expect. And even though the parks are at capacity, it's not busy everywhere. It's just busy in specific places and they're not always the ones you wouldn't guess. Still, other areas of the park like Pecos Bills or the Castle Hub in Magic Kingdom were pretty much empty. So we still saw some crowds. We encountered a couple of pinch points. Overall, the parks felt decidedly uncrowded though, and we rarely had issues social distancing from other guests. Is that how it's gonna be when you're there? Maybe not. We would go one day and it would be completely empty. Then we went the next day and we went to a different park and it felt crowded there. You really never know. It's kind of like how it was at Christmas last year where you expect it to be, you know, usually it's shoulder to shoulder and so many people in the park. But here where they're at capacity, people are in very strange little clumps of places. So you really can't gauge where the busy places are going to be. This has definitely been a strange spring break. We're trying to keep track of it on our blog we're giving you pictures and videos every day of what it looks like and what to expect because we know come summer if we're still at the same capacity level it's going to look very similar so we want to let you guys know what's going on and what to expect when you're there all right disney world is testing a new photo linking system this is a new feature that's going to make it even easier to keep track of your photos even if you aren't wearing a magic band which of course magic bands are no longer free for hotel guests the new feature is meant to allow attraction photos to be linked automatically automatically through the My Disney Experience app, just kind of through Bluetooth. Disney's already been automatically linking some attraction photos for guests who are wearing a magic band. That always happened to me that I, even if I didn't tap my magic band, I would still get the photo in my My Disney Experience account. And they usually do that through RFID technology. Now the new method uses your phone's Bluetooth to link in ride photos to your My Disney Experience account. It's currently being tested at Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror, and you do need to have the Bluetooth turned on in order for that to work. All right, Disney World annual pass holders ready for your magnet. You will finally be getting that Orange Bird AP magnet and you won't even need to visit Disney World to get it. The Orange Bird pass holder magnet will be mailed to active pass holders in early summer. Make sure you confirm or update the address for each adult pass holder in your household by March 31st to get yours. And Pop Century's Hippy Dippy Pool has reopened. Yep, some refurbishment work has finished up over at Pop Century Resort. The hotel's main pool, Hippy Dippy, has reopened to guests earlier this week. It's great to see that pool filled up again. Because there's been a lot of pool refurbs in the past couple of months. There's been a lot of very empty, very sad looking Disney hotel pools lately. All right, we got Disney Cruise Line news finally. Disney Cruise Line itineraries have been released for summer 2022. Disney's lineup of cruises for summer 2022 includes cruises to Greece, France, Italy, Spain, Iceland, Norway, and the British Isles, along with Alaska and the Caribbean, or the Bahamas. These summer sailings will be available to book on March 25th, 2021. And if you book through our friends over at Small World Vacations, you can get a gigantic free onboard credit. So free money, always good. All right, on to restaurant and snack news. Rose and Crown reopens tomorrow. The Rose and Crown Dining Room in Epcot's UK Pavilion is reopening after a month-long closure. Now, the pub has been open, but the dining room is reopening. Reservations are available for both lunch and dinner from 11.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Ronto Roasters has expanded their menu. Yep, Hollywood Studios is seriously upping its food game this week, from new snacks to totally new options at one of our favorite restaurants. Ronto Roasters and Star Wars Galaxy's Edge has debuted two new plant-based options. 
options, the Triple Sun's Breakfast Wrap and the Zuki Wrap. Triple Sun's Breakfast Wrap is made with plant-based egg, smoky chickpea onion slaw, and roasted tomato sauce wrapped in a warm pita for $11.49. And the Zuki Wrap is $11.99. It's grilled zucchini, smoky chickpea onion slaw, creamy garlic tahini sauce, and fresh cilantro wrapped in a warm pita. The sauce had a ton of flavor and a little bit of heat to it too. And while we still prefer the original Ronto wrap, this is a great option if you don't eat meat or want something with a little more kick. Also in Galaxy's Edge, those space forks are back. Yep, Docking Bay 7 has brought back the space fork. When these first debuted in Disneyland, they were just to use in the restaurant, but people started stealing them and then Disney started selling them. We hadn't seen them since the parks reopened, but now you can once again buy a pricey little space fork for $10.99 when you mobile order from Docking Bay 7. All right, we've got some Portillo's news. Yep, they've delayed their opening again. The Chicago-based chain Portillo's has delayed their opening date. The restaurant was expected to open March 23rd and has not yet set an official opening date, but we will let you know as soon as you can get those Chicago-style hot dogs close to Disney World, as soon as the date is set again. Now remember, this won't be in Disney World, it'd be right outside of Disney World, but people who are Portillo's fans are super excited. All right, Trolley Car Cafe in Hollywood Studios has two new Mickey-shaped snacks. First up, the Mickey chocolate chip cookie, a thick golden chocolate chip cookie packed with chocolate chunks for $3.99. It's a soft cookie, very chewy, delicious. It's very similar to a num num cookie at nearly half the price. The snack cart over at the corner of Hollywood and Sunset Boulevard had a Mickey Mouse brownie as well for $4.50. This one is packed with chocolate chunks and was soft and rich rather than dense and fudgy. We liked the cookie a little more, but both are solid desserts if you're looking for something in that $4 to $5 price range. Now this I am super, super excited about. Blueberry Mickey waffles. Yep, Hollywood scoops on Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood Studios is now serving up Mickey waffles, but they're not just regular Mickey waffles. These are gonna cost $9.50 and you're gonna get your waffles with blueberries cooked right inside whipped cream syrup and strawberry compote. For now, they'll only be offered on busier days and only until 11 a.m., but they were delicious and we're never gonna turn down Mickey waffles, especially not blueberry ones. Also on Sunset Boulevard, we got a big surprise. Rosie's All-American Cafe has a new snacking sandwich cookie. They call it the snacking sandwich cookie, which is a super weird name. Name. And it's $4.99. It's deceptively simple looking. It features a thick square of marshmallow sandwiched between two shortbread cookies that have pretzel pieces in them. Plus, it's dipped in chocolate and topped with pretzel and potato chip pieces and flaky salt. It's like a chocolate covered pretzel meets a s'more on a buttery shortbread cookie, and it all goes together really, really well. Now, the cookies were not as sweet as we expected them to be. You definitely needed that chocolate to add the sweetness. So, if you are not into super, super, super sweet, desserts, this one might be a good option. Pizza Rizzo also has a surprisingly good new dessert this week. Hollywood Studios is really trying, y'all. This is a dark chocolate and caramelized hazelnut dipped cannoli shell filled with whipped hazelnut spread cheesecake. It was a lot like biting into a Ferraro Rocher candy. The filling is like whipped Nutella. You can get this one for $4.99. It may not look all that savory or... I don't know, looks kind of weird to me, maybe not to you, but it's delicious, so there you go. Now the most Instagrammable new snack is over at Backlot Express in Hollywood Studios. The paint can cake is $6.99. The confetti cake is covered with vanilla buttercream and a yellow mango chocolate paint drip with a little white chocolate paint brush. Now the mango chocolate paint drip tasted a lot more like lemon to us than mango, just heads up on that. And the cake part is fluffy and moist and despite its sweet look, it's not too sugary and that mango chocolate was an awesome combo. All right, the joy of tea in Epcot's China Pavilion has a new drink special that we checked out this week. It is peach liqueur with fresh strawberry milk. Now that is super weird. Clearly strawberry milk is not something that is gonna appeal to everybody, but together with the ice and the peach flavor, we found it to be quite enjoyable and very refreshing. The texture is also going to be off-putting for some, but if you want to give it a try, you can get it for $11. We also tried some new desserts in Epcot's Japan Pavilion at Katsura Grill, the yuzu cheesecake for $5 and the mousse cake for $6. Now, I will preface this by saying desserts at Katsura Grill are usually not great. They're usually real small and 
and they're just not, they had a green tea cheesecake for a while and it was just super boring. Anyway, so yuzu cheesecake tasted as good as it looks. It's tangy, creamy, sweet cheesecake infused with Japanese citrus on a graham cracker crust, drizzled with strawberry sauce. And at that $5 price point, it's okay. It's not as big as I would want it to be for $5, but I'm glad to see that there's something that's a little better than what was there before. Now the mousse cake is a standard looking white cake with a thin layer of vanilla cream in the middle, a chocolate mousse type layer on top and a drizzle of chocolate sauce. It's very basic, it tastes basic. So if you gotta choose one of these two, definitely go with the yuzu cheesecake. We got a bunch of Easter treats at the Grand Floridian Resort. Now that St. Patrick's Day is over, we are seeing bakery cases filled with eggs and pastel colors. And we tried two new ones over at Gasparilla Island Grill at the Grand Floridian Resort. The Easter Carrot Cake Cupcake is $5.99. It comes filled with marshmallow filling topped with green buttercream and garnished with jelly beans, Easter sprinkles, and a white chocolate bunny butt. The carrot cake was moist and the marshmallow filling was a great choice. It is really, really cute. Now the miniature bunny cake is $7.99, possibly even cuter and more Instagrammable than that cupcake. It's a confetti cake covered with white vanilla frosting and decorated with colorful icing and fondant bunny ears. This one's a very classic and straightforward cake, very vanilla, but a solidly delicious cake. And again, you're probably buying this one for the looks. Now, Animal Kingdom has another carrot cake cupcake for $5.99. You can find it at Creature Comforts, Flame Tree Barbecue, and Restaurantosaurus. It's topped with caramel buttercream and a white chocolate thumper medallion, which is just that paper thing that sticks onto white chocolate, so it's not all that great but it's filled with cream cheese frosting, which we love. Now the caramel icing sounds awesome, but it was real subtle and kind of weird. So I don't know, try it, see what you think. And we've got a Falcon and Winter Soldier cake. Amaritz Patisserie in Disney Springs has a new petite cake for the Falcon and Winter Soldier, which just premiered on Disney+. Plus. Like all petite cakes, this one is 20 bucks and it is super rich and decadent. It's a chocolate chiffon cake with dark chocolate mousse, raspberry pâté de fruit, raspberry mousse, white chocolate pearls, and there's a lot of textures going on to keep it interesting. That chocolate and fruit combo was exactly what you want if you like that sort of sweet tart thing going on. All right, merchandise news. We've got a new spirit jersey, and this one is actually really, really cute. This one's in the gift shop at Expedition Everest, and it features everyone's favorite disco Yeti. The light blue spirit jersey has Walt Disney World and a big Yeti on the back with a cute snowy print for $69.99. And there are a few new magic bands we spotted this week. The first is a limited edition magic band featuring Ducky and Bunny from Toy Story 4 for $34.99. There are only a thousand of this 2021 Easter design, and you can order it on Shop Disney or grab it at the Emporium at Magic Kingdom or the Dark Room in Disney's Hollywood Studios. And we saw a Country Bear Jamboree magic band finally at Disney's Animal Kingdom at Riverside Depot for $29.99. The brown band features Henry playing his guitar. This is perfect if you are a Country Bear Jamboree fan. Now we also saw some Class of 2021 and Mother's Day magic bands. In Magic Kingdom's Emporium, we saw the new Navy magic band for the Class of 2021. And over at Frontier Trading Post, there's a new limited release Mother's Day magic band that says Sweetest Disney Mom and features Minnie Mouse with some hearts on one side of the band. Both of the magic bands are available for $34.99. Both are limited release. So if you want one, grab it soon. And we found the new tie-dye orange bird mask at Port of Entry in Epcot. This spirit jersey mask is $12.99 and features a cute little orange bird on the left side on top of a yellow tie-dye print. So there we go. There's the latest news for March 20th. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. If you are not subscribed to the channel, may I suggest you go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you be a part of our family here at DFV Guide. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.